This is Keith Olson, the man Bristol County law enforcement now says was found dead by the side of Interstate 195 in Fairhaven in the 1980s. It was a case that has gone unsolved for nearly 40 years, but new DNA technology is helping to get new answers to old questions. We had the evidence sent to a lab in Texas off from labs who took DNA from the skeletal remains and were able to uh, establish a family th tree through the advanced DNA technology. District Attorney Tom Quinn says a man possibly involved in the murder is dead, but another could still be out there. He was last seen leaving the house being escorted by two men in April of 81. We believe one of those men may have been John Brockley. The two were involved had a connection to or were involved with the same woman and there appeared to be bad blood as a result of that. Rockley was definitely a suspect. He died several years ago. The other person has not been identified. His office announced last year an initiative looking into the county's unidentified bodies. This is the second ID since. A lot of work goes into these cases. They're not solved in a week or reading some police reports. Back in the 80s, Quinn says investigators did solid work on the Olson case, even releasing this composite image after reassembling his skull but technology has come a long way. And that's why you do see around the country in some cases these, these DNA cold case hits. Uh, that is connecting someone to somebody who was murdered. So it's critical and using you know FBI technology, having a partnership with labs is critical to potentially solving these cases. The DA's office partnered with Texas-based lab Authorum to help crack this case. We did a proprietary form of sequencing called forensic grade genome sequencing. And we're looking at hundreds of thousands of markers to over a million markers of DNA. That's what we do at Authorum is, is take really highly degraded, contaminated, small amounts of crime scene DNA and figure out who that DNA belongs to. Michael Vogan at Authorum says that's the magic in the latest DNA testing, creating extremely detailed genetic profiles out of decades old evidence, and then working backwards to find who it belongs to. When you start analyzing that much information in DNA and you build a much more robust profile, you can then detect much more distant relationships than parent, child, or sibling. And so now we're at a point where historically you could only really detect a, a very close family member. We can now work from sixth cousin, fourth cousin, fifth cousin. Authorum used its process to help name who was the longest unidentified homicide victim in Massachusetts, known as the Lady of the Dunes. She was finally ID'd as Ruth Marie Terry last year through investigative genealogy. Terry was found in Provincetown's Race Point Dunes in 1974. There have been several other high profile unsolved cases locally that DNA has helped to solve. The Granby girl was identified this year as Patricia Ann Tucker. Her body was found in the woods in Western Massachusetts in 1978. There is Catherine Ann Alston too, who was only identified this year after being found dead in 1971 in Bedford, New Hampshire. She was a 26 year old Boston University student. And this technology is not just used to name victims. Matthew Nilo was arrested this year and is now being charged with a string of sexual assaults in Boston a decade and a half ago, again thanks to DNA testing. The really unique thing in the future of this is it being applied to modern cases. People don't need to wait for uh, cases to go cold anymore. In fact, we're going to drive cold cases to extinction because people won't have the opportunity to commit repeat crime. The growing use of DNA testing by law enforcement has sparked some concerns over things like privacy and racial disparities. In fact, earlier this year, an event at Newton City Hall would have allowed people the opportunity to voluntarily drop off DNA samples to help law enforcement. That event was postponed in part because of concerns and questions raised by the American Civil Liberties Union. Back in Bristol County, work continues on unsolved death and investigations. And DA Quinn says despite this emerging technology, old-fashioned police work remains the most important tool in solving cases. You still need to interview people and people need to come forward because the vast majority of cases aren't going to be solved by a DNA hit, if you will. The family should know we're not going to give up on them. Uh, solving the cases. The DA's office in Bristol County has 10 more unidentified body cases that it is still investigating. Authorities there also encourage people with missing family members to actually submit a DNA sample of their own in hopes that it could help detectives. Matt Fortin, NBC10 Boston.